You're one of the latest biotech companies working on a vaccine. What is your path? How is your technology different than some of the other biotechs out there also scrambling to find a, a potential vaccine? Sure, we have a very, um, I think, uh, powerful and productive platform to identify antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that circulate in your blood and, and protect from uh, viral infections and can help overcome viral infections. And we're able to isolate antibodies from patients who have recovered from an infection, manufacture them, modify them a bit, and then uh, make them available to other patients. And this uh, technology has been quite fruitful. Uh, the earliest example, or one of the earliest examples, is an antibody against Ebola virus that's called MAB114. Our scientists isolated that antibody in collaboration with the NIH. That antibody is now being tested in the Congo uh, by the NIH and is showing an ability to reduce the lethality of, of that infection. So very feel very good about that one. We have antibodies very... against Zika virus, dengue virus, malaria, right. and others. It's very interesting that you bring up some of these Ebola, Zika. Uh, we talk a lot about SARS back in 2003. What have you learned from those viruses that can help you glean some information about this strain of coronavirus and, more importantly, how to get a vaccine out of it? Yeah, well, we have a number of antibodies that we had isolated against SARS and also against MERS. Those are both coronaviruses. Our scientists had anticipated that it was only a matter of time until the next uh, coronavirus outbreak. So we had already been testing those antibodies for their ability to neutralize other strains of coronavirus. And not all of them, but some of them have the ability to neutralize strains of coronavirus isolated from bats, from civets, from other animal species. And so there's a possibility that they could also neutralize the new Wuhan virus. So we are testing that possibility now with a number of our antibodies. We don't yet know the answer, but our, our hope is that one or more of those antibodies will be effective. If not, we are uh, simultaneously going back and isolating new antibodies, specifically against uh, the Wuhan virus. Uh, and we are pretty, pretty confident that we'll be able to generate those antibodies. So it will take maybe a little longer, but uh, we'll get there one way or the other, we hope. We hope. Given what uh, you've learned about the coronavirus so far, what could you say about its uh, potential for getting worse, for becoming a pandemic, or could we end up in a situation where we had, like SARS, where it, it just eventually, effectively disappeared? Well, I think we're all hoping that it, it behaves like SARS and will eventually disappear. The early um, data suggests that it is actually considerably more infectious than SARS, uh, perhaps less lethal than, than SARS, but, but certainly more infectious. And I think, as your report indicated a few minutes ago, there are already more cases of patients with the Wuhan virus in China than there were uh, with SARS, and they continue to increase. So we are hopeful that this, like many um, viral outbreaks, will be self-limiting, uh, which would be great. <laughs> but it, uh, we are working really hard to bring our antibodies forward uh, in case uh, that's not the, the path that it follows. Is it important to keep some perspective here during these crises as well? Because they do generate a, a lot of fear. But it's worth remembering that the WHO says the common flu uh, killed well over half a million people uh, per year. I, I think that's a really good point. Uh, in the U.S. right now, uh, you have a higher chance of dying from flu than from the coronavirus. Flu is a, um, <clears throat> can be a fatal disease for many people. It kills thousands of people in the U.S. every year. Uh, and for that reason, we have a very interesting antibody also that is a, uh, capable of neutralizing all strains of influenza A that have arisen since the 1918 pandemic that we are currently testing in, in humans. Uh, and we hope to be able to get uh, efficacy data even as early as this year to determine to what extent we can reduce the frequency of, of flu infections. It, it is a paradigm for what we hope to be able to do with the coronavirus as well.